I'm going to start by asking you why this topic of race and identity. Why is it important for you and your colleagues to take a look at that now? When we looked at identities, we looked at identities uh, not just in the context of race, but we looked at six different identities, which included class, gender, um, family makeup, country of origin, and religion as well. Um, you know, we were, uh, there was a group of us, an internal team that was, um, you know, people from our creative team, from our education team, from our research team, trying to figure out what we wanted to focus uh, 50th anniversary research on. And we looked at a range of different topics, but the one that we all kept coming back to was this idea of social identity. Um, where do, and, and you know you know this, we're at a stage in our country right now where there's such significant demographic um, shifts happening. We are more diverse from a cultural, religious, class um, perspective than we've ever been, I think, in our history. Um, you know, I came to this country 30 years ago as an immigrant, and I now am raising my children in a society which is very different from the one I encountered when I first came here. So we all kept coming back to, we keep hearing about the impact of these shifts in demography on adults, right? They're all over the newspapers and the headlines, and the question for us was, well, what does this mean for children? And that's why we decided to focus on this. What does it mean for children? When we started the research, uh, broadly speaking, it was, a, it was a big survey. We had many, many questions in there, but there were, broadly speaking, we were trying to answer four questions, just to boil it down. Um, how do the adults in a child's life, their parents and educators, think about the impact of identity in terms of, um, or think about the role of identity in terms of the impact it has on shaping a child's identity, and then also how other people treat that child. Um, are these parents and educators um, you know, comfortable uh, in terms of talking about identity? And then are they having those conversations? And then how does all of those, how do those three questions look like when we start cutting the data by different demographics? If you can tell me a little bit about how you gathered the research, how many people, how you collected your sample, your data. We knew what we wanted to do was do a nationally representative survey. So we worked with um, a, a NORC, which is, a, they have a great deal of experience doing large scale surveys, NORC at the University of Chicago. And we talked to 6,000 parents and almost 1,200 educators. Um, and the conversations consisted of both telephone, um, we, we talked to the parents, we had telephone surveys and also online surveys. And what kind of questions did you ask them? What kind of information were you looking for? Well, similar to what I said before, which is, you know, how do you think about identity? How do you think about social identity? How do you think about its impact on, you know, how, whether, how it shapes a child's identity, how children are treated? Um, we asked about you know, the conversations that we had to, are you having conversations about social identity and how frequently are those conversations happening? We were talking about the survey that was conducted and some of the information that you were able to glean. We were interested in understanding how parents think about the impact of social identity on children. Um, you know, both in terms of whether it shapes a child's identity and how other people treat a child. Um, we were interested in understanding whether parents were having conversations about social identity, and if they were, then how frequently, and if they weren't, then why not? Um, we also wanted to understand if, their if, they, um, if they knew whether their children were being treated differently based on their social identity. So for instance, had, they heard, had their children heard a negative comment about themselves based on their social identity? Had they been treated differently? So we were trying to understand sort of not just how parents think about you know, the impact of identity, but also how it sort of impacts a child's daily life. What did you find? Well, the findings were interesting. So at a very macro level, um, so across all you know, every single population group, what we found was that parents don't think that social uh, identity is a key driver of a child's identity. You know, when they're asked to describe a child, and I think this is true, I mean, look, I would, when you're asked to describe your own child, the first things that come to your mind are, you know, he's a soccer player or she's creative. And, and what we found was that personality and interests really define how parents talked about their children at the top level. Um, 
old parents for the most part said that they you know thought they were comfortable talking about identities but then as we started dig uh, digging a little bit deeper we found actually those conversations are not happening and then when we started cutting the information looking specifically at how different so groups, how different demographic groups had answered that question, we began to see some interesting differences. We saw that parents from racially uh, diverse backgrounds felt that social identity was in fact a driver in terms of how their, in terms of shaping their children's, their child's identity, and also in terms of how other people treated their child. We found that, um, you know, a child who came from a minority group was more likely to hear a negative comment about their identity versus one who didn't. So, you know, it was, you know, I th for us it was interesting because at, at, at a very top level it felt like, you know, this is an interesting, a social identity is important and interesting but doesn't really sort of impact, you know, kids deeply, but in fact it does when you start looking at different groups. You had mentioned earlier that parents feel it's important but no one's having that conversation. Why is it so difficult to start that conversation? I don't think parents intentionally hold back information. or I don't think parents really feel um, like, oh my God, um, you know, this is something that's bad. I actually think there are a couple of different reasons. I think parents actually don't think that kids recognize identity as early as they do. Um, and we know that they do. We know that from other studies that have, be, that, that have been done, that kids recognize differences very early. And when they ask their parents about these differences, you know, on the playground, hey mom, why is this person's skin color different from mine? Or why is that lady wearing, you know, something on her head? Um, we tend to shush them up because we get embarrassed or we think that, you know, we're gonna offend someone. And I think in some ways what happens is that that begins to shape a child's perception of how they think about identity. Um, so I think we don't intend to do harm, but by not having the conversation or addressing the question as it comes up, I think we're shaping perceptions early. How do you start that conversation in an age-appropriate manner? I think it's not about sitting down and having the talk. I think it's about using everyday moments to actually have a regular conversation. And it's not just about other people's identities, but it's also about your own identity. You know, why you are who you are, why you should be proud of that. It's sort of uh, fostering a sense of self and a positive self-identity. And then talking about, okay, if you feel this way about yourself and this is what you eat and this is what makes you different from, let's talk about other people as well and why they are sort of different and what makes them unique and wonderful in that way. So I think it could be anything. It could be a moment in the supermarket. It could be a moment on the playground. Um, but I don't think, I think many of us wait to have this discussion and that feels to me like there's so many missed opportunities. What did the study find in terms of how educators were handling discussions of race and identity? There was a fair amount of overlap in the findings. I think educators were perhaps a little less reticent than parents in terms of, they, they, they were the same as parents in terms of, yes, we are comfortable having these conversations, but perhaps happening a little bit more often in school than they are at home. Uh, the one sort of big difference that came out in the educators survey was that the issue that educators feel is sort of most salient in terms of shaping um, a child's identity and how people treat them was social class uh, versus race, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and many of them said that they don't, um, they don't talk about it because it's almost a taboo topic. Are there any other practical tips for parents when it comes to best ways to start the conversation with, with their kids? I think that um, kids are exposed to so much media and media is so representative of the diversity that we see around us. So I think, you know, watching what their kids are watching and perhaps sort of using the diversity on the screen to begin the conversation might be one way um, of doing it. I know at Sesame, we've always modeled diversity and inclusion. So, um, you know, for younger kids at least, that might be a good place to start. In what ways has Sesame Workshop addressed and in what ways are you looking at addressing the issues of race and identity? The scope and scale of the study was very different from work that we've done before, but it really built on a body of knowledge that is 
you know, part of who Sesame has been for the last 50 years. Um, in terms of, you know, this is an issue that's important to, kid and, uh, to kids and inclus we've always modeled inclusivity. Um, if you think about sort of the last few seasons that we've done for Sesame Street, we focused on topics such as um, cultivating cultural competencies, which is a quite complicated way of saying, be aware of the wonderful differences that others bring to the table and you know, be respectful and understanding of them and modeling those behaviors early in children. So this, um, it builds off on sort of a body of work that's always been part of who we are. Is there anything that I didn't ask you, Tanya, that you would want to make sure people know? I think the one sort of thought that I would sort of leave you with and um, is, is this idea of, I think it's incumbent on all parents to have these conversations, not just a group of parents. Um, and I think if everyone is having these conversations, then it sort of takes away the burden from a particular group of people. And I think it makes just, um, you know, the world that we live in sort of uh, more open and perhaps more accepting because it's not just a sliver of society that's having conversations about identity, but rather everyone.